Hi, Melody. Your uh, sweet nail clips oiling machine is uh, all done and ready to come home. I'll clean it up before I uh, pack it. Uh, but she is running and sewing great and uh, making all the stitch patterns and doing the uh, needle position settings. Uh, right, left, and center. And um, so this is the final test before we pack her up to send her home. And um, in this test, uh, I'm going to go over the basic operation. I'm sure that you uh, know this machine well, but um, the way that she was locked up um with old dried out oil it may have been a while since you've used her so just going to basically go over uh, some of her little idiosyncrasies um, we're going to start by uh, winding a bobbin and um, your bobbin as i'm sure you remember is down here in the bobbin case below the slide plate and um Let's see, let's wind it in white. White's a good, fairly neutral color. Uh, and let's see. Put your spool on the spool pin. Go into the upper thread guide here in the front and down to the bobbin winder tensioner down here on the bed. And then up to your bobbin, which is going to go on your bobbin winder here, of course. Put the thread through one of the little holes. And hold it with your finger while you put a few wraps on it to hold the thread in place while the bobbin winds. Put the thread coming on over the top in that direction. Slide your bobbin on. And turn the rubber tire until the little keeper pin on the side clips into the side of the bobbin. Uh, then push down where it says push. This little finger will drop in and as you wind your bobbin, as it fills, uh, it's going to push that lever up until when the bobbin is full, it's going to push it up so far, it's going to turn off the bobbin winder. The machine will keep running until you take your foot off the pedal, but it'll quit winding. Declutch the machine by turning the cone knob in the center of the, of the hand wheel. The quarter turn towards you. And that uh, releases the uh, um, the wheel from the rest of the mechanism so they can wind the bobbin without cycling the rest of the machine. Now, if you want to sew and wind at the same time, you can do that. You've got two sets of holes here, so you can have uh, your uh, the thread you're sewing with uh, threaded up and the other one going down here to wind the bobbin way. So, uh, either way, it doesn't matter much but um if you uh if you wind the bobbin while you so obviously you do not declutch the machine so here we go uh go gently on the foot control oh and uh, let me point out super very super super duper important until you reattach this foot control to your cabinet all of this exposed wiring on the underside is live uh, you do not want to be plugged in until you have this uh, closed it up attached uh, to the wooden side of your cabinet. So, uh, yeah, uh, just to reiterate, unsafe until it's reinstalled. Don't plug it in until you've attached the, foot, the uh, knee control to the cabinet. Okay, all, right, all of that said. Uh, go gently on your foot control. No reason to go real fast. That's just an invitation to uh, break your thread or tangle things up. So here we go. And it, you can even put just a little bit of drag on the spool with your finger just to keep everything neat and even. And we're not going to wind the full bobbin. This is just for our test. So, uh, I'm going to stop there and put the thread. 
Reclutch the machine by tightening the chrome knob in the center of the hand wheel. Click the finger up to release the bobbin winder. Take the bobbin off. And with the thread coming off of the top in this direction, put it in the bobbin case. Bring your thread up to the little slot in the side there and under the loose spring until it clicks into place. And then you'll feel a little bit of drag on there. And there's too much drag on there. Let's see. That's a lot of tension. Let's back it off just a hair. When you uh, adjust your lower tension, which you really should have to do, unless you're sewing something uh, super heavy duty and uh, you're using heavy thread, or if you're sewing something really delicate and using really light duty thread, then you may have to adjust the pressure up or down a little bit. And you turn it in uh, like... 8th, 16th to 8th uh, of a turn increments and feel it as you go. And you should have enough tension on there that the bobbin doesn't unspool when you're holding it like this by the thread. But almost. Just a little more tension than what it takes uh, to start unspooling. So, uh, with the little finger pointing up, slip it onto the spindle in the center of the hook. Make sure it's in all the way good and tight. And the fingers and the little cutout made for it. And then we're ready to thread the machine. Let's start by taking off the... So that we're winding with. And uh, put your spool on the spool pin. This is a size 14 needle in here, so that's a good size for average uh, weight thread, average fabric, you know, shirting, shirting to denim. Um, go into the back thread guide then the front thread guide and then down under your check spring which is down here go down and pick up your check spring then go over the top of that big thread guide and then back down and between the discs of the tension assembly being careful you don't catch your check spring again then your thread is between the discs of the tension assembly, and when you pull on it, you'll see your check spring move. From there, go into this big thread guide here, and then through the take-up lever from right to left. Go back into that big thread guide. And down to the thread guide on the needle clamp. And it's a curly cue one, so you just go in, wrap around once. Make sure your thread goes neatly into the thread path here and doesn't get caught between the door and the machine. Uh, so go down from the tech up lever through the thread guide. To the little thread guide on the tension assembly on the uh, beg your pardon on the needle clamp cut a nice clean end on your thread and poke it just right there through that little tiny hole in the needle it makes a world of difference if you uh, cut a clean end and make sure it doesn't wrap around the needle like this silly one just did There we go. Okay. Hold the needle thread loosely and turn the hand wheel towards you one full revolution to take. So the needle can take the thread down, wrap it around the hook, and uh, bring up the uh, lower thread. Put the thread under the presser foot 
and you're ready to sew. What should we sew on? Here's a piece of denim. You can see I already did a test sew on this thing. Tried all the different stitch patterns and it looked great. Okay, double layer of denim. Uh, as always, hold your threads for the first stitch or two. And again, uh, make sure you got your uh, knee control uh, attached to the cabinet before you power it up. Okay, let's see. We are on straight stitch. Your stitch length lever uh, is at, let's go down here to about one and a half um, for stitch length. Your stitch width is on zero because we're going to do a straight stitch. I have the uh, needle position set to the center position. The machine is reclutched. We're in the sew position, not the darning position. And down here on the uh, down here on the buttonhole thing, uh, make sure you're on straight stitch. And here we go. Oh, let's turn the light on. Bink! I fixed your switch. So, nice straight stitch. Uh, for a zigzag, uh, make sure your needle's up out of the fabric, but uh, turn it up as high as you want. You can go from zero, which is straight stitch, all the way up to five, which is your widest stitch width. So I'm going to go up to about three, to a medium zigzag. And here we go. When you're doing zigzags or stitch patterns, don't go fast. You just break your thread if you do. Okay, let's see. Nice looking zigzag. No skip stitches, looking real nice. Thread back, I needle back up out of the fabric. Turn it back to zero. We're back a straight stitch, one and a half, hit, one and a half on the uh, stitch length. Uh, let's do a stitch pattern, something fancy. Again, no reason to go fast. And you can shorten up that ball and tighten it up a little bit by going even a little further down towards zero. If you get way down towards zero, you may have to put a satin stitch foot on here. Uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, maybe it's just called satin stitch foot. Anyway, it's got a channel in the bottom that that hump of thread that you're making can ride through without uh, slowing down the fabric from moving. Okay, so shorten the stitch length, so we're going to make it close enough. Okay, let's see. Now you see it zigging and zagging wide, but as you zig, as you stitch, going to get down to the point where your stitches are close to the middle and that's where you want to change your stitch width because the big cam in here it's about that long and it's got different uh, different um, thread uh, gosh I don't know what to call it anyway bumps on the cam that uh, that the follower moves along and that's what moves your needle back and forth to make the stitch and the uh, cam follower as you go from stitch to stitch it's going to go from one of those sets to the next set of bumps 
then to the next set of bumps, next set of bumps. So if you're at the wide part of one of your stitches, your chem followers are going to hit those bumps and not want to keep going. Um, just because the cam follower doesn't come up high enough to clear that big hump, that big bump. So anyway, so when you're down near the center position of your stitch, then uh, pull your lever, uh, your uh, release lever over, turn your, to the next stitch pattern you want to do, release that, and you're ready to sew your next stitch. We're still in zero on the stitch width. We're still a real close stitch length, still on straight stitch here. Still in sew position. Again, now watch that it goes wide and then it goes to the center position then it goes wide again then it goes to the center position as it creates the pattern so you want to wait until you're back to the narrow part of the stitch pattern okay it's almost in the center there pull the lever over then you can change your stitch so Let's see what happens if you don't do that. Okay, we're going to change stitch patterns. And we're going to change stitch patterns at the widest point of this stitch. Pull your release lever over. Oh, dang it. Never cooperates when you want it to. Anyway, make sure you get your uh, narrow point of your stitch when you make a change. So that's it. That's, that's how you change uh, stitch pattern. So I'm going to go back to a straight stitch and uh, sometimes uh, it takes a few seconds for the thing to realize that it's supposed to be sewing a straight stitch. There you go. Got it. Release itself inside. It's all clean and lubricated in there, but it's still um, sometimes a little slow to make the uh, make the connection that it's supposed to go back to a straight stitch. Uh, we're on straight stitch um, to uh, go from a sh close short stitch to a longer stitch. Of course, you just turn your uh, stitch length lever uh, up from zero towards four as far as you want to go for being your longest stitch length. And that's a respectably long stitch. Um, let's see, uh, this is your sewing foot pressure to release the all the pressure on your sewing foot like to do some darning or panting push down that little collar that button pops up go over here to these two buttons on the bed push down darn all the way then uh instead of the machine moving the fabric it's just kind of sitting there you are going to move the fabric okay i'm kind of hard to do that with both hands now you can move it. 
careful that you don't flex your needle while you're doing this because if you try to move the fabric too fast and you flex the needle and miss the needle hole, it's going to hit the needle plate and the needle's going to explode. And that's something you don't want to do. So uh, don't go too fast when you... Yeah, but you're, I'm sure you know all that. Um, your um, tension assembly uh, is pretty self-explanatory. It's labeled loose, normal, and tight. So uh, you want it on uh, normal for most sewing. Uh, a little tighter for heavier fabric, a little looser for lighter fabric. Uh, and um, oh, when you're uh, when you're darning, also make sure that your pressure foot is down because. Um, when you raise your pressure foot, it releases all of the tension so you can pull your fabric out. Uh, and you do need your tension while you're, uh, while you're darning or embroidering or whatever, making art, draw pictures. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, one thing that I didn't try out, let's just do it right now and see what happens. I'm going to set the stitch knife down to really close again um, and I'm going to after I take the needle up out of the fabric I'm going to turn to about two and we're going to make a small buttonhole so I'm going to turn this to the uh, left side of the buttonhole and sure you go back into the sew position and put your uh, put your uh, sewing foot pressure down roughly halfway okay there's one leg of your buttonhole this is the top bar and this is the right side of your buttonhole and back to the bar Let's see how it looks maybe painfully obvious that I am a technician and not a seamstress so I don't make many buttonholes. Let's let's do this again because I only got one side of the buttonhole there. So I'm going to turn it to the right, the left side of the buttonhole. The machine is going to go forward. I'm going to do the bottom bar, and then I'm going to do the right side. Interesting. So this machine will sew reverse, but it's not set up to sew stitch patterns in reverse, only buttonholes. So we sewed in reverse up the right side of the buttonhole. We're going to go back to the bar and sew the top bar. And there we have a buttonhole. So a buttonhole does work. Just wanted to test that before I uh, turn it back over to you. Make sure that that's working right. So while I'm thinking of it, I'm going to put the machine back in straight stitch here on the buttonhole adjuster. That's where you want to be for everything else except buttonholes. So let's see. We wound the bobbin. Talked about your stitch length, talked about your stitch width, uh, stitch patterns, cam follower release, uh, pressure on your sewing foot, darning, light switch. That's about it. Um, I don't have a manual for this machine, um, so I can't 
tell you where the uh, reverse button is. Let's see. I guess I guess reverse must be the uh, right side of the uh, buttonhole. That's the only thing I've found on here that shows reverse. Most machines will have a uh, a button here, or you'll be able to push the stitch length, uh, stitch length knob in uh, to make the machine reverse. But this machine does not appear to have any of those options. So for reverse sewing, just go back here to um, your right side uh, of the buttonhole. Um, okay, I'm going to put the stitch length up in the top end of the red here. And I'm going to go to zero on my stitch width. And we should sew a straight stitch in reverse. No, it's sewing a ziggity zaggy reverse. So maybe there's another option here for reverse, but if there is, I cannot find it. The center hole, there could maybe have been a knob in here that busted off at one point. But I don't see any evidence of it, and I don't feel like that shaft in there pushes in. Yeah, there's, I don't see any other option for a reverse. So I'm going to go back to straight stitch. Go back to the right side of the buttonhole. And see if we can do it. No. You can backpack with it, but it's gonna want to sew a little bit of zig and a little bit of zag in that reverse stitch. So, yeah, I don't know. I hope you have a manual at home and you'll be able to figure that out. But uh, again, make sure you go back to the straight stitch mark here on your buttonhole adjuster. So you're sewing all the other stitch patterns in that position. So, that was a lot of words, but basically, you've got a really awesome machine here, and she's running and sewing great, making all the stitch patterns, and uh, doing everything that uh, she's supposed to do. And uh, I'll shine her up for you, and then pack her up and get her home to you. Uh, so again, thank you so much for uh, trusting me with your awesome sewing machine. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure. It's a, always a fun puzzle. Each, each machine is a little different and it's got little idiosyncrasies. So, uh, just fun. And um, if you have come to this video from somewhere else on the internet, we are Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine Restoration. And we are on Stagecoach Road out in the Coast Range of Oregon. Uh, so we are StagecoachRoadSewing.com. And if you come out to our website, you're going to see hundreds and hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds of beautiful machines that we've uh, sewn over the last 25 years I'm sorry that we've restored over the last 25 years or so uh, we've actually restored well over a thousand machines but uh, we've put up pictures of uh, a few hundred of them uh, if you just want to go see a wide variety of machines from uh, back just after the Civil War to uh, way up into the we have been to the 80s even, I think. We have a couple of machines that are uh, quote-unquote newer. Um, newer than what we usually work on. And uh, you'll see pictures from all different angles. Uh, beautifully restored machines, put front, back, side, corner, top, bottom, whatever. And um, 
a little bit of information about each machine. And uh, at the very top of the page, there are usually 5, 10, 15, 20 uh, beautifully restored machines that are still available for you to take home to your sewing room. So if you want something beautiful that uh, is a, a far better quality than anything you can buy today at any price, uh, check it out. Uh, just if you want to sew and you want it, you want your sewing to be. Um, if you want to have control of what you're sewing, get a good solid machine. And uh, those machines that you see at the top of the page that are for sale are good, solid machines um, backed by a lifetime guarantee. And uh, like with this machine, we'll make a video just for you that shows you how to uh, how to use it. You know, how to wind the bobbin, how to turn the machine, how to just do all the different things that you need, need to uh, you need to know. Uh, get the most out of your machine so anyway i'm going on and on and yakking and uh uh yeah i'm just gonna let y'all go but uh stop by stagecoachroadsewing.com and we'll see you there bye